Hello and welcome back everyone to Mainstream PC. My name is Julian and today I'll be giving my impressions on the 3950X uh, 16 core processor from AMD which I've been daily driving for three months now since uh, the beginning of December and uh, give a little bit of a backstory how I even decided to go with a high core count CPU. Um, let me preface this a little bit by saying I used to uh, use a i7-6700K in my workstation system, which I initially had overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, and when I moved to Thailand three years ago, um, I started to see instability, so I had to clock it down to 4.7 gigahertz. I've been using it that way since. So back to the 3950X and how I initially got turned on to the idea of a 16 core chip. So early last year in 2019, we saw the first benchmarks leaks of Zen 2 and the first whispers of what it could be, uh, which was quickly followed up by E3 and the announcements of most of the SKUs of the Zen 2 lineup including the 3900X, which already would have been a great upgrade for me, going from four cores, eight threads to 12 cores, 24 threads with, okay, arguably slightly lower clock speeds, but with the IPC change, it would have been an upgrade nonetheless, no, no matter what. So from that point on, I was, I was already pretty much set on getting uh, rising into my workstation uh, computer but um, I was kind of really on the edge of should I wait for the 16 cores or not um, at E3 Dr. Lisa Su announced the 16 core version the 3950X for the Zen 2 lineup and at that point I was like okay September I'll wait it out it's gonna be a real nice upgrade it'll set me up for longer than if I'm just going to go to just to a 12 core chip. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it was delayed. So in the end, I got it in or it was officially released in late November. And I remember uh, on the 25th, I think was the official release date from the 26th on I, I was scouring every online portal trying to get my hands on a chip. Um, there were very few available anywhere. And I managed to snag one up very early morning on the 28th um, for what I would consider a decent price. I was expecting to pay about $900 here in Thailand for, for this uh, processor, which launched at $750 MSRP. Um, because of import tax, uh, import duty and tax, uh, it ended up costing me about $840 at the time, which I considered pretty decent. Um, I know that retailer as well, so they usually have pretty fair pricing, which most other retailers were just trying to cash grab as much as possible because they probably knew that this chip wouldn't have very high availability. I've also seen that many people called the launch a paper launch because of that low availability of this chip I would have probably called it the same um, seeing how even big YouTube channels and reviewers have not had an opportunity to get one of these chips in their hands but if a schmuck like me who at the time didn't have a YouTube channel, didn't have any connections or anything, just managed to buy it online. It wasn't technically a paper launch. It was just really low availability. And I think there was just an initial batch of good, good chips that were stockpiled for that launch. And uh, from what I've seen during the last three months, it hasn't gotten much better, but there is availability now in some places. So much for how I got my 3950X. Um, now I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've been using it for, my workloads, what my system looks like, and um, what my verdict is on the chip. Um, I've been using it together with an X5, uh, X470 motherboard, um, the Crosshair 7 from Asus. It's been a great experience. BIOS flashback, 
get it free, uh, Ryzen 3000 uh, ready. Didn't have to drop a CPU into it because it just has that uh, CPU-less uh, flashback option. Great VRMs on that board, so didn't really have to worry about thermal issues with the VRMs from the chip drawing too much power. The 3950X is just as efficient as the 3900X, so the power draw is really not an issue, um, unless you try to all-core overclock it, of course, which I really can't recommend for Zen 2. I don't think it's worth the extra uh, wattage that you'll be drawing for the performance you will gain. As for the workloads I'm using it for, I could have made the switch to HEDT for a while because um, I have workloads that can utilize uh, higher core counts. Uh, I do run VMs. I do run usually one to two VMs at a time uh, for certain tests, uh, installations and such, which I do not want to be affecting my main system. And uh, I also do some work in SOLIDWORKS occasionally, I like to uh, do some DIY PC chassis and uh, see how the layouts of the PCs will look like. Um, I like to do Photoshop and After Effects and of course Premiere for video editing. So most of these uh, applications utilize a number of cores at least. Some of them use high core counts. Uh, the VMs of course take um, cores and RAM away from you, essentially. So um, I'm also running an SQL server on my main workstation pretty much all the time because I uh, load databases and I reproduce uh, scenarios. But the experience has been like day and night, obviously, because before I had four cores to split up for my VM. So each VM got one core with two logical pro or two threads on it, two logical processors. And that, of course, ran like molasses. And um, my main system was left with just two CPU cores, four threads for any other work that I was doing as well. So it was pretty bad already. I could have made the switch to HEDT um, for a while justifiably, but I was never going to shell out the money for, I don't know, an X299 board or whatever and a processor that costs $1,200 or upwards uh, just to get more cores. So for me, Zen 2 and the high core counts were really a blessing. I mean, I could have gone with Threadripper as well, but same thing applies. High cost in main boards already and uh, Threadripper wasn't that cheap either. So in terms of productivity, it's been like night and day, pretty much. Uh, I went from barely being able to effectively work if VMs were running uh, to now not having to pretty much worry at all. I even went as far as to assign four physical cores, so eight threads to each VM now, which makes everything more snappy on the VMs. Everything runs faster, everything is easier and more realistic because I think a lot of people run four core machines these days. So any kind of scenario I was trying to reproduce was much more realistic in that sense. There's also my more personal work that I do on my workstation, like um, SolidWorks and Premiere and After Effects. Everything that needs rendering, like if I render some uh, assembled uh, component CPU case or whatever in SolidWorks now, it's like at the snap of a finger. As for rendering videos in Premiere, I wasn't quite sure how much of a performance uplift I would say. I mean, I was expecting better performance, but the i7-6700K does support QuickSync. So there was a potential that maybe the difference wasn't going to be that great. But even that, the, the extreme difference in cores makes a world of difference. Um, I think like an around seven minute video with the YouTube 1080p 60fps HD preset um, used to take me about nine minutes to render on the i7-6700K with QuickSync enabled, um, which isn't bad, but now it takes less than three minutes. So 
I can essentially just go get a coffee, come back and watch my render, uh, watch my video and see if I maybe missed something and maybe do another cut or edit or whatever. So that's a massive uplift. Like it, the, the amount of time you can save if you have workloads that can benefit from the high core count, it's amazing. Work aside, the chip also games very well, although I have to admit I can't really tell the difference between the i7 6700K at 4.7 GHz and the R9 3950X at stock speeds. There might be a measurable difference at maybe 0.1% lows, but in terms of feeling or perceiving it in any way, I can't. Um, I want to also say at this point that if you're considering this chip for gaming, you're doing it a disservice, in my opinion, unless you have at least half of your workloads that can utilize more than 12 cores, um, don't get this chip. Save yourself the $250, put it towards a nice graphics card, which will definitely improve your gaming experience more. Um, with Big Navi and Ampere on the horizon, probably being announced soon um, just wait it out see what kind of, what will be available there and spend the 250 extra dollars for that so was it worth for me to wait five months and uh, spend 250 more dollars on the 3950x over the 3900x in my mind yes the freedoms that I now enjoy in my work and in my daily workloads, um, just being able to throw more cores at it and uh, not having to think so much or having to, you know, being slowed down on my main workstation when the VMs are running and things like that. Um, the convenience was absolutely, or convenience and time saved was absolutely worth the money for me. On the other hand, if I had known back in July that um, the 3900X would have served me that much better than my i7 6700K for my workloads, I would have probably pulled the trigger back then. On the other hand, I really hope that uh, the 3950X will last me that much longer. So, you know, give something, take something. <laughs> it's, it's a balance between the two. Um, obviously $250 is nothing to scoff at, that's an entire new motherboard uh, um, that you spend extra, but um, if you have the workloads, the 3950X is obviously worth the money. Uh, if you don't have the workloads that use the cores, save yourself the money, get a 3900X if you really want a high core count CPU. Um, that's my verdict for the 3950X after three months of using it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike and let me know in the comments what you didn't like about it. This is Julian with Mainstream PC. See you again next time.